All right, Dr. Dara, O'Carroll, here we are again, a couple months later. <laughs> is it only a couple months? <laughs> it's, 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 it's even been a couple of months. It's been like maybe six weeks, right, or seven weeks? It feels like a year. I don't know. It's, 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 it's amazing how time is compressed or Warm. contracted when you're, you know, not, not seeing people, you know. Uh, I was uh, I was talking to uh, my my friend Kenny Florin and uh, like I think a couple of days ago actually and it feels like a life we were just saying how it feels like a lifetime ago uh, when we were still having like live classes and group classes and yeah just <laughs> it was only like six weeks ago seven weeks ago something like that yeah no no yeah we were discussing whether you know you should uh, keep your your gym open or not and uh, right and um, yeah that's how how long ago it was in which yeah. um, is bizarre it's really bizarre yeah. how things how quickly things have moved and then now we're kind of on the other side of the curve it seems like uh, i'm not following los angeles as intensely as as hawaii but um, it it sounds like you guys are uh from my colleagues who were trained in los angeles county they they are starting to be on the other side of the curve uh, as they are in new york and, and most of the country so yeah seems like it i was looking at uh, the governor Cuomo did a press conference and he was talking about the numbers and just how most people that are getting infected or coming in and they have been the COVID-19. There are people that have stayed at home. And then you look at the CDC numbers and I mean, like uh, every doctor and, 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 and nurse that I talked to here, it seemed to say like nobody's coming in with COVID-19. They made all this room for these patients to come in for the, you know, the influx of people, but it never happened. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the hospitals are losing all kinds of money and mm -hmm. every, every 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 day every month right uh so it's true it's, it's true that the american hospital and medical system is uh it's a for-profit business largely uh entirely actually and so it, just like any business when you're not getting patients which you could substitute the word customer for that mm -hmm. um if you're not getting customers like any business you're not going to be paying your your payroll, you're not going to be paying your rent. And so they're all faced with that. And, you know, it's, it's uh, almost to the point where I think people, and this is rightly so, it's a good thing. I think it's a very good thing that people followed instructions and that like, Hey, look, if you want, how do you quantify a life, you know, like even one life, if staying at home, if you staying at home saved one life, uh, would you do it? I think I would hope so. Um, um, but we are seeing the consequences now of everybody staying at home is that, all right, now each municipality and each governmental organization is gonna to need to assess the data that they have that their own uh, um, epidemiologists are collecting. And is it time to open up in a responsible way? You know, like, uh, you've got a tier, low risk, medium risk and high risk. And at the, the high risk end is, you know, our concerts and, and bars where, you know, you go to a bar not to be away, <laughs> six feet away from somebody, right? Um, it's going to be really hard when you mix alcohol into any situation to remember what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that'll be our high risk. And those things are going to be opening up the, la the last. And so the things that can open up now are probably, you know, retail um, where you can half the amount of people in your store. Um, I know Hawaii, they're looking at, Hey, you can have one person per 200 square foot of, of space which is a huge amount of space uh but that's the the capacity that they're gonna they're gonna have in in our retail uh, stores but um so every every municipality is going to look at their situation um, and i think it's kind of what we talked about the last time here is that it's going to be like whack-a-mole you know it's going to flare up and flare down and um people are going to be moving and um it's going to be real interesting for a country like the United States that's this large and this dynamic. Uh, if we were smaller, like, you know, New Zealand has done a great job and that they just locked it down, right? And they've had one case over the last week or something like that. So easy for them to lock down um, and close all their borders. But for the, a country like the United States that has a, not only a diverse population with diverse opinions, but diverse territories and huge cities, it's, it's, it's going to be challenging. I mean, what's the solution, right? I'm always like, hey, what's the solution? Uh, okay, we're gonna be living in this. You know, you, know, you read, you wrote an article for USA Today and and mm -hmm. Wired, right? So, uh, the 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 vaccine, right? Waiting for the vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we're around with the vaccine a year and a half, two years, or however long it's it's it takes, right? 
And, uh, and then we don't know, is this the vaccine? I, it was funny because on that article, it said, what did the vac the vaccine? Because we don't know if, if people can get it again, right? Even if I test a positive for sure. antibodies, right? So we don't know. So what does that mean? Like, I, you know, I teach martial arts. And so it's like you te we teach people to face their fears, right? And, to, mm -hmm. and to, mm -hmm. to, to not have that mindset. And so just living in that mindset with all the news and all these different different news things, it's just, it's different, different federal saying one thing, state, you're, depending on your state saying a different thing. And then the CDC, you know, we had talked about the masks the last time, you know, like they don't work. And then the CDC said the same thing, right? Because we were in line with that. But then the governor of, the, of, of New York, right, is like, he wear the mask and he mandates that. And then everybody's doing the mask now, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just like one person says one thing, another person says the other thing. Sure. What's, the, what's the solution, right? What's the solution? Yep. To live in fear for the next year and a half, two years. I mean, living in fear, watching the news, that's like the opposite thing for your immune system. Like I know when I have a competition or a fight, like a lot of times you get sick after because your immune system gets shut down to prepare you for the fight or flight. And living in that state, mm -hmm. man, it's like the opposite thing. The liquor stores are open, but like, you know, for example, my gyms and things that are healthy for you. I mean, they close the parks and the beaches, sure. you know, it's like, it's like the opposite thing. They almost want to get you sick, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I, not uh, being with other people. So it's like, man, I, I know I have instincts, I, you know, I've mm -hmm. done some things in my life, you know, and I have instincts and uh, you know, it's making me open my eyes up, right. To all, to all sides, you know, not just listening, but like open my eyes. Cause do I have, do they really have my best interest in mind? The government, the CDC, the who, I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. Sure. I, I, I understand your, one thirst for knowledge and thirst for the right answer because uh, when this all rolled out, everybody uh, I think uh, was frustrated and angry and freaked out really wow. and fear, as you mentioned, you use the word fear quite a bit. And it is because there is a real risk of perishing and we probably, whoever's listening to this all has or knows somebody who may have, may have succumbed to this disease. But the, the, real, the real risk is that um, you know, if you look back in history at the 1918 Spanish influenza, which right. I think this is the most similar to, is that, right. it's a, you know, when people stopped doing the recommendations, which were very similar to the, what we're doing now, which is cloth masks, they didn't have as many surgical, they didn't have surgical masks back mm -hmm. then, they didn't have the manufacturing capabilities. Um, when people stopped doing that, there was another flare. And um, I, I encourage, and, it, and maybe it's more of a, a where our society in general has gone, especially in America, is that, yes, it's always great to like uh, take all sides of every argument. I, I yeah. never want to- Freedom, right? Freedom. Yeah, yeah, I never, yeah, I never want to discourage that. But when you are listening to any argument, make sure who you're listening to is one, credible. Um, and two, um, uh, make sure that they're, and, and here's the thing when you start, these aren't really art, it's hard for me being a scientist because uh, that's what medicine is, is really being a scientist is that science is, uh, you know, is, uh, you have a hypothesis, you, you obtain data, um, you experiment, and then you, then you find out is your hypothesis true or not. And there really is no argument behind science. It's either the science is correct or the science probabilities are saying this. And so what a lot of people are frustrated about is that the science is telling us this, yet it's going against everything that we want to do like we're a, we're a big badass country right and we want to be out and we want to be doing things and i think people are uh getting zanier uh by the day and i understand that but ultimately that hasn't changed the mechanics of this virus i mean there was a lot of people that died in new york in new york city there was a lot of suffering there's refrigeration trucks because they couldn't handle the amount of dead you know this is a real thing it's a real thing and I, I hear you about your immune system. Uh, a lot of ways that you get sick, I would, I would think that you get sick after a, a, a fight is that your cortisol levels are going quite a bit up. The cortisol right. being a stress hormone. Right. And so the more that you get stressed, the more that your, your inability to fight any virus. But that doesn't mean you should be out exposing yourself to get the virus. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I think if we all kind of do, and uh, in Hawaii, we have this phrase called kokua, which is basically your responsibility to your community. Mm -hmm. That if we all do our best to kokua one, in, one another, um, what is good for me is good for you and good for my neighbor. 
in that. All right, I understand that we want to be out and uh, we want to be exercising. We want to be getting sun. So uh, right now we can't do that, but do your best to do a home gym, home workout. And you, you know, you have, you know, tack fit is a great thing that uh, people can, uh, can use and utilize and use your experience and expertise and how to stay fit, which is definitely important. Meditate, which is a large part of, you know, martial arts in itself. Uh, but I understand your frustration. Like it is a very frustrating time in general. Um, but if we become, if we start rebelling and becoming too relaxed um, uh, on these social distancing measures, we may find ourselves back into the same place that we were. And then you'll slide back into uh, the quarantine measures that are now being lifted and we'll do a backslide. And I think that's probably the worst situation because people are not going to want to, <laughs> not going to want to go back inside. <laughs> They're not. Yeah, it was, uh, there was a congressman that uh, uh, wrote something, dear colleagues, and he wrote about the deaths, you know, you know, uh, you know, there's 3,106 deaths, 2,108 of those persons lived in nursing homes, you know, personal care, you know, uh, homes and, and assisted living residences. I mean, it's, you know, 67.9, you know, uh, percent of those who have died from lived in these, these types of, of settings, right? The governor, uh, you know, I, I screenshot a kind of his things too, his numbers, you know, but, you know, I mean, he had basically, you know, that people, 60, 60, what is it, 68%, 66% of the people that are getting hospitalized, you know, they got COVID-19 from being home, you know, and being, you know, social, social distancing and, you know, who knows, right? People, there, people are going to Costco and it's packed there, right? Uh, you know, they, you have certain rules, but like, come on, they're, we're not, we're not like surgeons, right? They're not like professionals, you know? So it's like, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, you look at countries like Taiwan, Singapore, North, I mean, Korea, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, Sweden, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what other countries? Uh, 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 yeah, I mean, Taiwan is China, right? It's, it's the democratic China. They never close for one day. We have friends from on all those places, you know, they never close for one day. They had, of course, some things in place some safety things, yeah. but they never close. What, what justification does it have to close everything here i mean even the hospitals the doctors and the nurses are going to be laid off because sure. there's not going to be money coming in how does that help society here's the reason why they were not they were able to not close is that they being a, a, a country that was very close to the epicenter of the original sars mm -hmm. um, in 2003 is that they knew the potential um, being a neighbor to hong kong and uh, they knew the potential of a new a pandemic. And so they had one governmental and people thinking about this, whereas Trump fired our team that was supposed to think about this back in 2018. Mm -hmm. And so they were ready and they had what they did as opposed to us is they had a, a large public health system that was ready for this, that had a vast amount of testing ready. And they were able to track and see where this virus was going. Whereas the whole month of March, um, so to explain why um, the U.S. was so bad at getting their testing out is that the CDC was manufacturing their own tests. The WHO released the test that South Korea used, that Germany used, and everything was fine with it. But the CDC was manufacturing their own test. And what, uh, what a PCR test is, um, is uh, I can illustrate it over video, but this is going to be over podcast. But mm -hmm. basically, um, a, what it detects is it's called a polymerase chain reaction. And what it detects is a string of RNA and RNA is just a messenger form of DNA, but in viruses, it's going to use them. It mm -hmm. can use the DNA viruses and RNA viruses, but this virus just happens to use RNA. Mm -hmm. And so RNA is, a, is, it's like a binary code, except you can use the four different bases, A, U, C, and T. And, T. and so it's basically a string of bases that, encode proteins to build the new virus and so that's what the pcr uh, is detecting and so if there's just even a smidget of that rna in that swab there's this thing called a primer and the primer sits on top of that that rna code and says oh hey look we found this rna code make millions and millions of copies of it so we can detect it in the little chemical solution that we're going to test in half an hour so basically that little chemical solution is bathed for however long it needs to. Um, it builds millions and millions of those copies after that primer has sitting onto that RNA. And then when you look at it, you're like, oh wow, there's like tons of, of coronavirus RNA in here. 
that means whoever this was swabbed from had coronavirus. So that's how a PCR works. But uh, our CDC uh, primer folded on itself. So the primer can, you know, it's a string of bases, just like a primer string, uh, binds to the bases of the, the coronavirus uh, mm -hmm. RNA. So it folded on itself. It did a, something called a hairpin turn. And so if you've got something that's hairpinned, it, it's not strung out in a way that can bind to, to the RNA virus. So they, they, it, it's basically molecular gen, um, engineering 101 that they, they messed up somehow. And it was due to contamination at, at the CDC lab. So you can fault the CDC for that, definitely. Mm. Um, but for the month of March, going back to our original point, the month of March, we were not testing. We had no surveillance of where this virus was going. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it spread silently through our, our, our country is that it was going places that we just didn't know. And then now you're fi we're finding out that through genetics and uh, that this may have been even present all the way back in, in Jan you know, January, December. December, yeah. A yeah. year in LA, I went yeah. to the place where they test with the antibodies. And even the test, the COVID-19 test, it's not, it's not, they're saying, some people are saying it's not accurate. Right. Even the not testing. Right. It, it depends on what test you got. I don't know what test you got, which would, it's, uh, you sent it to me. I don't know if it's, um, it's uh, I, I think I had some technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. No worries. But it was, it was a venipuncture, right? It was like they drew your blood or did they? They took my blood. Yeah. Took my blood. Okay. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a finger prick. No, no. Okay. okay. Yeah, the finger prick ones are pretty inaccurate. Um, there may be ones that eventually become more accurate, but the venipuncture ones, I don't know what you which one you've got, but there are ones out there that are 99.5% sensitive and 100% specific. Sensitivity and specificity be two okay. accuracy, accuracy numbers that we look at. Okay. So the, uh, the, the beanie puncture ones, meaning like you get a, a needle stuck into your vein and draw the blood, um, a test tube of blood, are you pretty accurate? Um, and what that means is that uh, you were exposed at some point to likely this coronavirus. However, some of them have not worked out the kinks and that this is not the only coronavirus that can infect people. There's four benign coronaviruses that circulate and are responsible for a third of colds mm. throughout uh, the cold season. Mm. And is it accidentally flagging one of those antibodies? I know I read uh, my buddy in New York who's, who tested positive as well. He's an ER physician. He thankfully mm. is doing okay. He had like a week or two weeks of myalgia, mm. body aches and fever. He's doing fine, uh, thankfully. His test, when I looked at the receipt set, or the, the data, it said like small chance, and they didn't give a, the, a, the number, but it said small chance of false positive rate mm. if uh, it could be confused with those benign coronaviruses. So, um, yeah, did you have symptoms? Did you feel feverish I, or I, cold? I had, or? I, had a, I, had a, I had a cold, and there was a time, there was like a dry cough going around at the gym. and. You know, yeah. I got something, you know, it wasn't crazy. I kept working. I didn't miss anything. Yeah. It felt, you know, my, I got, uh, you know, I had uh, the cough and I had uh, some sure. fever and stuff, you know, I had some symptoms for sure. Well, when was that? Uh, I think in February, you know, uh, I think mm -hmm. February or something like that. A very real possibility. It was that, um, you know, flu, that's the tail end of flu season for, mm -hmm. uh, for California. Possible was a flu. Um, if you're testing positive for antibodies, do you have it on you? Do you yeah, it I'm looking at it right now. I I I I, t I got IgM, uh -huh. IgG, right, and then the IgA. Oh, interesting. And all three were positive. Yeah. Okay, so IgM. Um, just to briefly describe what the antibodies are. Basically, IgM is like uh, you've got two different parts of the immune system. You've got mm -hmm. your innate immune system, and you got your adaptive one. And mm -hmm. what antibodies are the adaptive? Think about it as like the small, the the specialist. Um, uh, part of your immune system. The innate ones are basically like these gobbler up uh, macrophages and natural killer cells that they'll recognize anything is for, they're like kind of uh, big, dumb, brute uh, uh, <laughs> uh, cells. They're not as eloquent and accurate as the other, as the antibodies, but they'll recognize the innate immune system. They'll recognize anything as, as, as foreign and go ahead and kill it. There's certain parts of the immune system that if you're re-exposed can make those a little bit more tailored to coronavirus. But what we're talking about now is the antibodies. It's a more sophisticated or the a humoral um, type of the immune system where your body is exposed, white blood cells ingest or uh, uh, take this uh, parts of this virus and they kind of chew it up in their mouth, so to speak. And then they start pumping out these antibodies and these and 
the IgM is the first antibody that comes out and it comes out roughly around 10 days to two, to two weeks after you're exposed to any mm -hmm. virus or any uh, bacteria. So that's the first one that we see. So if you have IgM positive, it doesn't last forever. It actually wanes. So roughly by a month, your IgM goes away. So um, I was reading up on it a little bit and it said like a, it can be a stay up to 60 days or 90 days, right? It, 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 at times. Yeah. I don't know if you got, did they give you number like titers? Titers are the amount? No, no, it, no, no, it just no. said positive. It just right, said it's right. present or not present. Right. Yeah. So you can tell a little bit more on like how much antibody is there. You see. Yeah. So it can all be all the way up to, and it also depends on the sensitivities of the test as well can extend up to that long, but generally you'd say like after a month, like the IgM most of the time is done. Mm -hmm. And then after that, think of it as two different bell curves. And then after that, a long-term one that uh, sticks around is the IgG. And that's, that's the one that's, um, that is going to be, if we are going to use quote unquote immune passports, that's the one we're going to hang our hat on. Mm. And so the fact that you have both IgM and IgG makes me think that whatever that virus was in February that you were exposed to was a coronavirus and most likely yeah. SARS coronavirus too. So congratulations on beating the shit out of it. <laughs> I mean, man, you know, like I went to the, that place that tested, they said a third of the people that have gone in to get tested mm -hmm. said, uh, have tested positive for it in LA, a third of the people. And they had like a, a symptoms. Some people had no symptoms. Some people had some symptoms. Some people yep. got really sick. Yep. Yeah, December, or January, you know? Yep. So, so, so the, a third of the people that have gone in there tested positive, you know, and therefore obviously they've, you know, they've recovered and stuff. And so, that's why it kind of makes me like opens my mind up. Like, man, like this thing's been around here for a while, sure. you know, and we were care, care, it was fine. Care, careful though about making that assumption that a third of people, uh, got it. They may say that a third sure, of people sure that have who, tested and it's who, like who they have middle, tested. Upper, upper middle class. Like I think more wealthy people have got goes to go to this place, you know? So sure. I, I'm, I'm just thinking of those, those, those people. Right. So, yeah. Uh, it's different across the board, right? Yeah, so it, it wouldn't be a third of the entire population. It's, it's right. a select amount of people who, one, maybe had uh, symptoms. Right. You know, the more proportion of people, like, well, you know, I actually felt kind of sick. I should go get tested. Mm -hmm. And then, two, is the amount of people who have the funds or ability to even get tested is mm -hmm. another thing. Um, yeah, so. Like Two hundred dollars, and I, I waited a little bit. While. I was like, I don't know if I, because I, you hear some things that they're not accurate and all that. I'm like, should yeah. I do that? And then yeah. I was like, I need some peace of mind, so I yeah. went there and, and got it done. Well, well, yeah, it's a good idea to. Um, the more knowledge is better, um, but also I, I'd love to see the, you know, which test it was. So you know, they always have those accuracy numbers. So there's always a false uh, chance of being one one false positive, meaning it flags positive and you weren't actually positive. Yeah. And also false negative, you know, yeah. it, it, you didn't have it or you did have it, but you didn't test positive for it. Yeah. So, I mean, my, 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 it doesn't change anything, I guess, you know, I'm going to just take it with the grain of salt You know, I'm not going to put like, Hey, yeah. Yeah, I'm immune because it seems like things that I'm reading, it says like, even if you do have it, like you can get it again. Right. Um, yeah. Right now we don't, we, I, I wish we know the answer to that. Like, so you've got like, so going back to the, and this is just, you know, this is a new virus that happened upon the world and we don't know, we need more scientific studies to come about it and we're doing our best to, to, mm. to figure all of these things out. But if you look at the spectrum of the human coronaviruses, this is the seventh one that has been able to infect humans. Mm. Um, there's, there's reservoirs in bats, there's reservoirs in cats, there's reservoirs in ruminants, which are mm. um, a fancy way of just saying camels and cows, so ruminant. That could be like the word of the day that I learned the other day. <laughs> Um, and so there's viruses all over the place and, um, the benign coronaviruses were only uh, discovered in 1960 and you've got ones that just have very, very small, um, symptoms or very low, low risk. And those ones have been shown that you can get it and then eight to 12 weeks later, get reinfected again. Right. And based on the amount of antibodies present in your system, not whether the antibody was present or not, it's the amount of antibody conveyed how sick you got. So you had more antibody present, you didn't get as sick. And then we're talking about colds, you know, nothing that's too bad. Some colds can kill those who are predisposed, you know, 
COPD and bad lung issues. So um, we don't know, and that's why the WHO released a statement, I believe it was on the 24th, is like, we still don't know enough is just because you have antibodies present, is this going to convey protection? So that's one side is the benign coronaviruses. Now you look at the more severe coronaviruses like SARS um, and MERS, and MERS killed 40% of people, SARS killed about 10%, so much more severe wow. illnesses than this one. Um, and uh, the antibodies faded in those with SARS after about a year to two years. Does that mean that they couldn't get reinfected? We don't know because you know, the SARS virus faded away. Um, people with MERS, there just hasn't been enough of them to get reinfected either. So we don't know the answer to that question, but we do know that with MERS only, uh, this was a very small study. It was only about like 10 people, mm. but uh, but 80% of them, two of them didn't uh, mount an antibody response. Does that mean that they can't get reinfected? Because again, there's that very sophisticated an uh, antibody response that your body likely went through that to produce the IgM, to produce mm. the IgG, you know, it chewed up that virus and was like, okay, when we see this again, it takes a while for that antibody response to happen. But then there's also that innate response that those, you know, uh, big, dumb, natural killer and macrophage cells that also has a memory component as well. And so it's, are our bodies using more of the innate response or are they using more of the humoral response for this virus? We don't know the answer to that yet. If it's a combination of the two, is it more heavily dependent on another one? We don't know. And so it's just, time is going to tell and there's a lot, a lot of people working on it. And so, um, I wish I could give you a better answer. Yeah. I just, I, I just question the, the shelter in place. I, I, I do believe that we should have, uh, we should be careful as we start to open up, you know, mm -hmm. and be able to gauge things, you know, but yeah. living in, uh, living in fear and, and, uh, I, I just don't think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the way to live, you know, because every day is a blessing. It's not, nothing's a guarantee. You know, life's not a guarantee. Like every sure. day, you know, sure. <laughs> right. Well, you, no way, you know, you're, so you're, I live I, that every day that I do live, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, be happy and, and, and have people around me do be the same, you know, and not be like in this fear state of getting worried of getting sick, you know, because a part of life is being sick. And if it's your lucky day, it's your lucky day. But in the meantime, you can be happy and, and I guess work on your work on your immune system and your health, right? To to be able to take the hits if it does come. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, just working on your immune system, this is taking out healthy people too. And so, um, you yeah. know, so like I, I don't think uh, everybody shares quite. I'm not trying to be uh, um, you know inflammatory in any way. I don't think sure. everybody shares your same sentiment yeah, I, I respect everybody's opinion yeah. you know? i yeah. think i think i respect everybody's opinion and i think everybody should respect everybody else's freedom right if they want to stay home and they want to shelter in place they should shelter in place and then uh people that want to go out and go to the store and 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 whatever like you know jog in the park you know or jog in, in the hot on the, on the trail oh yeah, yeah those are do that, you know the, those and aren't if, being you can't do that in california now you can't go out and jog oh, and, the beaches are still closed and the governor just closed it up again and that's like that's what I'm saying. Like it's the opposite of things that of uh, for healthy, for health, you know, mm -hmm. That's, uh, of, of course, like you shouldn't have a party of a hundred people or hundreds of people, you know, you should. Yes. Yeah. You no, know? No, no, we're, like, we're not asking for that. I'll be responsible. Let's, let's ease into it, you know, let's ease into yeah. it and then, and then gauge it from there, you know, but just like, no, nothing in sight, nothing like nothing concrete. Hey, let's do it this day. But he sees a picture with people on the beach and then all of a sudden the, 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 the he closes the beaches again, you know, Mm -hmm. or, or extends it you know for no reason and mm -hmm. that's just not that's not speaking of numbers and the numbers don't add up you know why are we still mm -hmm. why do we still have these these out of home orders you know mm -hmm. and why how do you how do you justify having like liquor stores open and then doing closing things up that are that like making that essential and other things not essential you know mm -hmm. things that actually make people healthier and stronger sure. I can't speak to the specific nature of Los Angeles and California as I'm not, I don't know those right. numbers, but what, what I can just say in general is that this is a, you know, a, a conversation that's happening, not just on every right. state, but a global or a global, but also a country level. Yeah. And what I'd like to, to liken it is that like, we have like the best minds that are thinking about this people who like for decades, they, all they have studied is, is pandemics all they have studied and thought and breathed about you know long before march when this even became any part of the our lexicon 
mm. about what to do and how to act towards this. Mm. And so I would implore people to trust those who have dedicated their lives to one, um, not for fame or glory, not for anything of that, it's because they're severely interested in this and severely wanting to make a difference. Mm. And so you've got not only the scientists and the doctors and the virologists, and the most importantly, I think the epidemiologists, you've got them night and day looking after us. But then also you've got our economists who are looking, who are doing our, our best and they're all getting into a room and they're all saying, look, what are, where are we today? Mm -hmm. Where can we be tomorrow? Mm -hmm. What is the best for our citizens? And I understand the freedom aspect, but being a physician who's seen people die from this, who've seen people suffer, who's, who've had colleagues become severely ill, it's the last thing on your mind. You're not going to want to say, I wish I had, well, yeah. uh, I'm just thinking of Braveheart now and that freedom speech. But like, it's, it's I think, a little bit uh, irresponsible to demand that we can do whatever. You're not saying do whatever we want, do it responsibly. Right. Right, exactly. But but, but you have the freedom to choose. Have the freedom to choose, not to live in a Nazi regime where you know you have like neighbors ratting you out, or because you went to the park, you went for you know jogging outside without a mask on, you know, where nobody, you know, just just yeah. you're being responsible. You know, it's just it's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, here's the other thing too is that like there's a lot of people who are saying let me do what I want, um, but okay, if you got onto an airplane, right, and um, when you get on an airplane, you entrust one that the engineers know exactly what they're doing, mm -hmm. right? And that you don't know any more than the engineers. Mm -hmm. And that there's no way in hell that like, hey, if, uh, if, if I open the door, a lot of the things that people have been talking about is the equivalent of opening the airplane door at 20,000 feet. It's just mm -hmm. like in the medical field, like, what do you want to do? What and why? And when I hear that, hey, look, it's because of my, uh, it's my freedom and my right to choose so, I don't think that's true in the sense that if what you're choosing to doing puts other people at risk, it's not your freedom to choose. It's, it's, you need to know the situation as an engine, not being an engineer who that knows how uh, to engineer an airplane. I am sure as hell not going to comment on now. Nah, I think you should put that wire over there, or I think you should put that pulley over here. I don't know fuck all from anything when it comes to building a plane. So when our, plane experts, if you use that analogy, our epidemiologists, our scientists are telling us these things. They're doing it because they know, they honestly are looking after us. Mm -hmm. And so when we start rebelling and we start saying they give us our freedom, it's, it's, it's hurts me a little bit in that um, people are not trusting science. And that was what my large art, my article was about in oh. USA Today is that there's been this huge movement mm -hmm. in the United States that is partially hitchhiked, hitchhiked off the anti-vaccination movement, partially hitchhiked, and it's the same thing, uh, climate change as well, mm -hmm. and that they're ignoring science, and they're ignoring the, our scientists, which like really, really hurts me to my core, is that they're ignoring the, our experts. Like Dr. Fauci and Dr. Rick Bright, the recently ousted guy at BARDA, they've dedicated their life to knowing everything about this, and everyone's just saying, you know, a lot, not everyone, a large proportion of the population are saying, F you, I know what's better for me. How do you know that? You don't right. even like, right. how do you know that? How do you know that? Right. And so I'd implore people to trust humanity in some sense. And you know, like, uh, yeah, uh, you know, and I told you, did I tell you about my dad being in, uh, being locked up in, uh, in uh, his home, his nursing home for the last you, know, you didn't. No, you didn't. No. And he was diagnosed with COVID. I'll, I'll get to that later, you know. But I just want to say, like, I really appreciate you because I, I think, especially after reading your article, I think we're kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum, you know. But I appreciate to have that conversation, you know, and to discuss these things, you know. I really appreciate, you know, like us, us doing that, you know. But I would say I feel like we should be responsible and, and ease into things, you know. But being in lockdown, like without a, a thing in sight, you know, just, just I don't think that's the right, that's the right thing. That's the solution as well, you know. Sure. And I feel like people are being conditioned to be in fear and to be, uh, you know, to submit, I guess, you know, to, mm -hmm. to I don't know, to, to the, the coronavirus, uh, to, to, you know, to getting sick, right? And uh, like, I'm, I'm gonna get sick, you know? And, if, and uh, you know, I'm a martial art guy, so we train like to mindset and all these things. And so we're, we're getting the mindset, like, 
I don't want to get sick. If you say, I don't want to get sick, you're going to get sick. You know, like you, mm-hmm. we, I think the last time we talked, you know, like, you're like I'm probably going to get sick. And then, well, if you say that, right. <laughs> you know, like a lot of times it happens, right. It comes true. Not we are what we think, right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but uh, I definitely keep my eye. I keep, I keep, I take everything with a grain of salt, you know, and uh, Fauci, like, you know, you start, I mean, you see like, there's, you know, a lot of people like trying to debunk and, saying, you know, it's like, it seems like it's a business though too, right? Like science and these things. And so, you know, if you look at some of the studies of sugar, right? And the scientists that claimed that sugar is, you know, I don't know what they said, like that it's, uh, that the, the fat is bad for you and, and all those things like, and, and had that whole studies, but the scientists and these guys are paid off, right? It kind of makes you like, you know, and of course, like living in knowing what happens when you, <laughs> when you eat, you know, when you don't eat the fast, you eat the sugar and you make yep. them just doing the marketing on this, those kind of things, like just kind of makes you like, Hey, like let's keep the eyes open and like take everything with a grain of salt. Cause it can be propaganda, right? All these guys have, you know, as have dedicated, their, dedicated their lives to science and to, you know, to, to, to medicine, you know, of course, like, but I take everything with a grain of salt and I try to keep my, my, um, I guess not be so closed off, you know? And sure. keep my, my, my ears open and, and, and the other side as well, you know? Sure. And, you know, for, for example, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2012, 2013. I don't know if I shared that with you last time. You did? No, no. And I went into the fight doctor, right? And uh, he does that. And he brought me in like a, a couple of days before my, you know, my, my, ne- my, my next fight. Hey, we need to talk to you. And I was like, oh, that's not a good sign. So I went in and he tells me I have, you know, it looks like I have MS. I have all these lesions in my brain and things like that. And then, uh, and then uh, basically they had me do, uh, 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 um, you know, a bunch of tests and stuff like that. And, and it's, uh, you have, sorry, you have MS, you know? And instead of giving me like, like a, I don't know, some kind of solution, maybe like eating well, eating differently or movement. And of course, mindset too. Like I was, I was given a stack of drug books, mm-hmm. you know? I was given a stack of drug books. Like, here you go, decide which one you want to take, you know? And uh, I don't take any drugs, you know? And I could have listened and I could have accepted that, but I didn't, you know, and I really searched and, and started eating, changed up my diet and I started feeling better and I managed my stress. I'm really aware of things, you know, and of course, like the tack fit has really changed my life and, and giving my life back, you know, cause I was in really bad shape. I couldn't put my seatbelt on I had a hard time talking I had a hard time walking, you know, mm-hmm. and I did a podcast with this guy, Mr. Shushu. He's like this amazing capoeira guy. And the same thing happened to him. He was going blind in one eye and, uh, and, uh, you know, he, he started to take the drugs and he was not, not doing well. He was gaining weight and he wasn't, you know, so sure. is that always the solution? Like there's gotta be, you gotta keep the eyes open. Like, you know, acupuncturists and Eastern medicine people, they've been, been doing these things for thousands of years. Mm-hmm. Is Eastern medicine wrong? You know, these things work, obviously is Western medicine, you know, I don't know. Like we gotta, I guess, keep the minds open, you know? And uh, you know, if we're like, a, we're looking at an atom, right? We're 99 point nine 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 energy right and we're point zero 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 will like matter right the nucleus mm-hmm. of that right so it's like what we think how we how we react to things uh, you know change things right it's it's who we are we're spirit we're we're spirit you know we're we're energy you know mm-hmm. the way our eyes are forming like we can't see through each other and stuff like that but we're energy right so all this news and all this negativity and the fear i think that's the enemy for me from my from coming from my martial art background in the fight Cause that's what we train people not to have. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's, I guess where, where, where I'm at, you know, I'm definitely keeping my, I don't think I, I try to disrespect anybody and I really try to keep my eyes open, but mm-hmm. it's like, it's tough to kind of believe everything that's out there, you know, and just all these crazy headlines, just bring in more fear to people. And uh, I don't think that's right. I agree with you. Fear is never a good thing. Fear can um, never be productive. Um, I would, I would try and, Every media, like it doesn't matter what angle of media you look at, like they prey, prey on fear, right? <laughs> you know, because right. that that sells that sells news, Crazy. right? It Crazy. sells news, Crazy. yeah. Um, however, there is a, a point where, and I agree with you as well that uh, the best medicine is preventive medicine. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can prevent um, a heart attack uh, mm-hmm. by eating well throughout your life. And mm-hmm. prevent the buildup of plaque and arteries mm-hmm. in your heart. That's the best medicine. You don't want to end up in the ICU with a catheterization. Right. And so eating well and becoming a holistic um, pyramid to your to your life is probably the best thing you can do for for you and, and your family. Mm-hmm. However, 
when it comes to a contagious disease, one that is uh, um, a virus that can spread from human to human, things are a little bit different. And, um, you know, we have uh, Eastern medicine, um, actually a, a good friend of mine, an acupuncturist in LA did send me some um, herbs, some Chinese herbs, which I plan to use uh, when a big, there was never a big wave that hit here in Hawaii. So I only have one batch of them. So I'm going to hold off. So uh, I also agree with you that the mind body connection is stronger than we feel and that, that Western medicine hasn't caught up to that yet. Uh, but when it comes to uh, the understanding of viruses, how they replicate, how they transfer between humans, what medications can act towards viruses, um, we are leaps and bounds ahead of where we used to be. Um, and above Eastern medicine, it's just Eastern medicine isn't that precise, but when it comes to the mind body connection, um, Eastern medicine is definitely has some weight to, to consider, uh, a lot of weight to consider. Uh, it would be the, uh, you know, uh, where Western medicine is now is that look, look, we're able to get on an airplane and fly across the world. You know, that's, that's our advancements in engineering and, and medicine have gotten us this, our society to where we are. Our advancements in Western medicine has, has eradicated smallpox, has eradicated, nearly yeah. eradicated polio. You know, we wouldn't have been able to do that without the molecular engineering that, sure. that a lot of our knowledge is based off of now. Sure, Vax, vaccines can, they've, they've saved a lot, a lot of, maybe humanity, right? Even. Yeah, yeah. The, our, the, um, our human longevity, our lifespan is mostly due to the, the advantages of vaccines. And so when it comes to, and this is going to be the next great debate, our debate right now is how we're opening up. And I understand that. But once the vaccination becomes... Um, you know, in, in a year, uh, once it become a candidate is, is prudent, um, that's going to become the next great debate. Are people going to force, can people, our governments force us to get a vaccine? Uh, I think if you believe in science and you were just, um, <laughs> if you believe in science, you will, you will take it because it'll save you and your family and your neighbor and your community from contracting a potentially deadly virus. I hope people listen to that message, but um, there will be a side that will say, this is a business, people are making money off of it, which as far as I can see, this is going to, whatever candidate vaccine is going to be made, it's going to be made just like the polio vaccine, like back in the 50s, 60s, when it was made and it showed to be efficacious, they took the patent off. There was no patent on the polio, the Joseph Salk, S-A-L-K, the Salk vaccine. There's two polio vaccines, Salk was one of them. He's like, I don't even want, I don't even want this patent. Here, you take it because uh, I want everybody to, have, I want to rid the world of polio. And then everybody took it. That's it. <laughs> you know, so, because we didn't want, we didn't want our kids growing up in iron lungs. We didn't want our kids paralyzed. My dad actually had pol polio for, for, he couldn't move his right leg for a while, but somehow his body got it, got rid of it. I don't, they don't know what happened, but he was nearly a polio victim. And so, um, you know, if, if, if there's an opportunity for, hey, take the vaccine and then you can, uh, <laughs> then you can do everything you want again. Mm. It's as simple as that, <laughs> you know, so. But that they don't know, like when there was an article in USA Today, actually it was like, there was a link after I read your article on mm. uh, the vaccines stuff that vaccines, like they won't, you know, if you, if you get it again, you get the vaccine and then you might get it again, even with the vaccine, right? So is that the ultimate solution? We, um, so with a vaccine, we can tell the body and the immune system that we were talking about, both the innate and humoral side, we can kind of like give the body a code of like, hey, look, this is, this is how you fight this thing. Because mm -hmm. the body may take, the virus may trick the body into temporarily, and that just might be a evolution standpoint of this virus to make it so, it, you know, a virus, like we said in our last podcast, all it's you know, born to do is to make more of itself. So if it could somehow find a way to sneakily tell an immune system, like, all right, like, I'll be protected for a while, but then I can come back and infect you, it's going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so we can interrupt that by telling our immune systems, all right, all right, don't, don't cut any corners here. Don't forget about this thing. And we can have a vaccine that conveys long-term immunity. We won't know that until we have a chance to, that's what the trials test are doing now. Yes. Yeah. Right. We have to test, test it. it. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. And that takes time. That takes a lot of time. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 I know. I mean, look, there's there are vaccines out there right now that we can start pumping into people, but then there's also the real risk of some vaccines. Like they made one for the cat uh, coronavirus that mm -hmm. actually made cats worse. And so they're like, well, right, this, exactly. is not, <laughs> this is not the right, yeah, this is not the right thing to be given to people. So they're going to do their due diligence and make sure that it's, it's, it's um, not harmful. Let, let's hope, I guess, you know, let's hope, I hope for the best I, you know, it's like, you can't until, well, I don't know. Do I want to be the guinea pig or do, you know? Oh, well, by the time it gets to us, by the time it gets to us, there's been thousands and thousands okay. of guinea, guinea pigs already. So. I, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I assure you, I assure you, Albert, Alberto, I assure you. Because they had that, I don't know if there was a 60 minute episode on the swine flu. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and how neuro like neuro neurologically, like it gave it like a woman, she was, she went and just, she didn't really need it, but they gave her the swine flu shot and she had all these neurological issues after that. She was like, uh, like, you know, she couldn't use her legs anymore. She, oh, she had Guillain, she had Guillain Barre, um, which is a demyelating disorder that can happen after any viral infection. And so when you give the, um, some of the flu virus uh, vaccinations are a, an attenuated virus. Basically, it's right. like a, a cold virus. It's, it's a virus, but it's just like doesn't have all the weapons in it. It just mm. has the outer layer that can. Yeah, there's a very, very low, 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 low risk of of getting Guillain-Barre from the flu virus and or yeah. flu vaccination. Sorry, uh, any virus actually, cytomegalovirus that causes a, 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 a diarrhea is the most common virus to give Guillain-Barre. Um, but uh, I think, uh, would you rather, uh, the flu The flu can kill you, but on we know that this is about 10 times the rate of killing you as the flu. And, but not only that is if you have it. Is it are those, those the, doing the numbers back it up? The latest CDC numbers, don't, don't back that up. It says the, uh, flu, the flu, the flu and, uh, and, uh, and the uh, and the uh, uh, pneumonia is, is is killing more people than than COVID nineteen. PC mm -hmm. the last month on the on their website. The flu is. Yeah. Well, the um, this season. Yeah, if you look, if you go to the website, I you know I screenshot it and went there. Uh, in the in the days. United States, as when I looked in February at the end of March, the United States had about uh, twenty or thirty thousand deaths from the flu. We're already way above that. Mm -hmm. So 70,000 deaths with the social distancing measures since, since March. So if we did not have any social distancing measures, we'd be up in the hundreds of thousands of deaths easily. And we just know, I mean, basically, I do not see a, there's no flu virus that does the, that kills young people so regularly. Like that's the, like, I don't see, I may see one every three years, a bad flu virus that kills a young person. So, but we are seeing this daily that a young person comes in dying. A flu doesn't for what? Do that. For, for what? For COVID nineteen? COVID nineteen. Mm. Yeah, flu doesn't do that. I mean, the governor Cuomo, I think it was today or yesterday, he went on the and he talked about all the the the, the numbers, you know. Mm -hmm. I screenshotted it, you know, like I mean, just people staying at home and it's getting people over fifty one, right? Those are the main people, not so much young people. Yep, yep, and, and a lot of it has to do with especially not kids, you know. Yeah. Especially thank God that thank God that our kids are not dying. Um, and so, touching on uh, and people may we, we talked about the flu vaccine and the reason why the flu vaccine that you have to get one every year and then people are like, well, I got the flu vaccine but I still got the flu, is that the flu the flu virus is the reason why the flu virus keeps circling around the world so frequently, is that it's really terrible at replicating itself. Mm. It, it mutates. It has this thing called antigenic basically it shifts ever so slightly or it drifts ever so slightly into just a little bit different that your those antibodies your immune system doesn't recognize it anymore so every season it's just bad at replicating itself and that's advantageous because it keeps tricking our immune system so you have to it, just enough that it can reinfect you again however thankfully this coronavirus has an extra enzyme a nucleate Nuclei polymerase, I believe. I probably messed that up. And virologist is going to eat me out. But, but uh, it has an extra enzyme that actually double checks its its when it replicates itself. So it's remaining remarkably stable for an RNA virus, which is a, a typically a virus that's poor at replicating itself. So we do think that once a 
as opposed to the flu vaccine, it's not going to mutate and cause different strains, so to speak. And so when we do have a vaccination that works, it will work. Uh, whether it conveys long-term immunity, that, that's the goal. That's the holy grail. Right. We don't know. There's a lot of unknown, the same, yeah. same questions, right? We yeah. <laughs> right. You know. Like the last time we spoke, you had told me about hydro, hydro, hydroxy chloroquine, right? Chloroquine, yeah. All right, chloroquine that helps uh, with the COVID nineteen, right? Once you have it, as a, to help uh, relieve some of the the symptoms. Uh, well, the data at that point was unconvincing. Mm. Uh, it was um, it was a potential candidate in that, like, if you had like were the sickest of the sick, you'd give it as a hail mary. But mm. by far and away, did we didn't recommend it to be taking as a pro one prophylaxis mm. or two as um, as uh, somebody who just wasn't really ill. And it turns out the more shortly after that, the more that studies came out, it was like, okay, this really isn't showing any efficacy. And then um, one study came out from the VA and that twice the amount of people who took uh, hydroxychloroquine died. And so I was like, okay, obviously something's going on here. And it could have been that uh, the sickest of the sick were being self-selected into getting hydroxychloroquine, mm. but it's pretty, it's shown pretty so uh, sufficiently that it's more dangerous than it is efficacious at taking this. So there's, there's a new drug called remdesivir that is a repurposed Ebola drug, which I think we talked about in the mm. last that was being investigated. Mm. And that one is showing some, uh, promise as well without the deadly side effects that hydroxychloroquine can have. Mm. Um, hydroxychloroquine is in the one pill that can kill club. So if you like drop one of those pills on the ground, which we see a lot, like, mm. oh, you know, here comes your baby or your kid and they think it's an Altoid or an M&M and they put it in their mouth. And, you know, I get that all the time. Parents come in, they're like, I don't know, he was eating something. I didn't know what it was. Mm. And then I read, I saw that I had spilled a pill or my pill bottle was open mm. and it's deadly enough that it can kill a, a young child. And so, um, so we know now that, that, right, unless there's some randomized control study that comes out in the future that it sh accurately shows efficacy, that we're definitely not gonna recommend it. You know, like the, speaking to the ventilators before, you know, I heard that hospitals are getting paid, right? If they say that the patient is COVID-19 rather than, you know, some, something else that, on the death certificate or even, you know, when they go there, they you know, they get paid by the government, right? For those patients. And then they get paid, you know, like 39,000 bucks or something like that for the ventilators, if they put them on ventilators. Mm. I mean, that's gotta cause, that's gotta cause some, uh, you know, uh, you know, people are, humans are humans, right? They, they, mm. they do things that, uh, that in self-interest, right? So I, I don't, I don't I fudge the numbers for sure. I, like, I can't I can't speak to that like I don't, I don't know of anybody who's doing it um, and I don't think you can say somebody has coronavirus <laughs> um, without like that's on a ventilator they're gonna test positive mm. you know they're gonna uh, yeah. there's, there's gonna be a positive test that says they have I was just saying that the hospitals right they get paid they get paid if they have COVID-19 patients rather than you know then if they're not COVID-19 patients and oh, so, they'll get they'll get paid either way for an admission if they're sick enough to be admitted to the hospital. They'll get paid either way. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure. You know, but that's that's what I'm hearing too. So I wanted to kind of just bring it. Oh, up. yeah, no, no. If you get admitted to the hospital, like, you know, uh, Medicare or Medicaid is going to pick up the tab if you're not don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. And if you have insurance, if you get admitted to the hospital for a non-COVID related illness, the hospital is collecting a fee for that as well. It's not that they're not getting paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then like one to my dad, right? He's been in lockdown, like for Easter, we had to visit him in his, in his assisted living home, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, visit him. It was like jail, right? You go through, the look, we were look, visiting with my kids, you know, mm -hmm. on Easter and we brought the cards and everything and we put them on the glass and, you know, talk through his phone and it was, you know, it was kind of crazy. He, his health isn't too good. Like he's, you know, he, some days are better than others, you know, sure. but he's been in isolation for the last six weeks. And then this last week with the COVID-19, he's been in isolation, right? And now he has COVID-19. He's the guy that's at the mo at most risk, right? And he, he has it, you know? So, you doing okay? 
he has a cough. He's going to be okay. But who knows? You know, maybe they put him on a vest on a, on a, on a ventilator and it kills him because <laughs> it's same yeah, thing. Yeah. Like the ventilators are, are killing people too. How so, long has he uh, had? How long has he had symptoms? Uh, it was just last week. You know, my sister. So he, oh yeah. So he's about a, he's a week or so yeah. into it. He has a cough. He's going to be okay. You know. Yeah. Good. Uh, you know. So, but still, it's like we can't see him. And yeah. they took him, and it's like the, the, the you know, the E.T. movie, right? Where, uh, you know, they quarantined, and, you know, they, they, that's, what I, that's, what, that's, that's the vision I have, you know? Like, you have to, it's crazy. Like, they forgot his, his, his uh, hearing aids, his glasses, his phone. It's just, like, unbelievable. So disrespectful from a man. He, 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 he volunteered to go to the Vietnam War, right? He was, like, a special forces guy because he believed in our country, he was adopted after World War II. He believed in our country. He would have stood for the freedoms. And then for, for, for him to be disrespected for me, it's just like unbelievable. I just feel like so disrespectful, you know? What if he was dying? I can't see him before he passes away. Unfortunately, uh, for your safety, and that's what's happening in the hospitals, is there's no visitors. And that's one of the tragic things about this, is that your dad would be very infectious at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sorry that he's... Uh, not being treated the way that you feel that he should be treated. Yeah, and I think he should, I think he should be, but yeah, no, that's one of the tragic things is that, you know, we're having to FaceTime uh, family members about decisions about somebody sick on a ventilator and when, you know, maybe they're not going to get off and what would you like to do? And it's heartbreaking to have those decisions being done over mm-hmm. a, something as impersonal as a phone. Yeah, you know, it sucks. It's just it Ultimate sucks. Respect, it sucks. You know? I mean, I could self quarantine, or I could have whatever some kind of uh, ankle thing on me, right? Uh, to self quarantine, some kind of tracking device, you know, uh, no problem, right? But mm-hmm. that's not even an option, right? So, well, if you look at it this way, is that if you get infected, and uh, just the mere fact of walking out of that hospital, you're shed, you're spreading it, you know. So it's just, it's just, it's tough. It's tough. But what um, about how he got it? I don't know how we got it. He's been in isolation, right? He probably he got it from a person. For sure. Yeah. So it wasn't us. It wasn't his family. It wasn't uh it wasn't out and about. Yeah. From the home, like a there, there, there is very there is very real risk of healthcare workers uh spreading this virus. They're around it. Um, you know, and it's we had an outbreak in a hospital in Maui where there was some patient had it and then you know all of a sudden 15 healthcare workers tested positive it's just where the virus is it's around and so hopefully they catch that sooner and that we can uh test our healthcare workers which are one of our essential workers regularly that would be one of the ways that we should open up our government is that make sure that you have adequate testing for your essential workers that everybody wears masks that you have adequate contact tracing that you have either a digital app or a uh, task force, a large, 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 large body task force that can call down and track down, like if you tested positive, uh, where you were in the last two weeks, so they could figure out who's at risk. And so having those three things in place is a really, really uh, important part about opening up safely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess, I guess there's no clear, clear solution of what the, what the solution is, right? Uh, no, no there, there's there's clear solutions to opening up definitely um doing it up, gra- right to do yeah. it slowly to do it slowly but to yeah. to move to move fast past this and uh and uh to kind of get no- back to normal life yeah you know, how, um like, we're for it whatever normal was before this it won't be normal until um as i mentioned in that article until we rid the world of the prevalence of sars coronavirus 2 virus uh, and the only way we can do that that is like what we did with polio and smallpox uh, is drastically eradicated with a vaccine. Mm. Yeah, I guess we're at, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in a different uh, viewpoint with everything. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I, for sure, I believe in being responsible. I closed my gym after we talked last time, you know, but it's just like, I don't know, like the numbers, the numbers don't tell the same, the same, the same truth, I guess, you know. Sure. Albert, all due respect, absolutely 100% all due respect. And I thank you for closing your gym and it was important. Um, and I think you did save a lot of tr- community transference by doing that because just being a, a like activity where people are really so close together, the risk of transferring the virus was huge. But 
looking at the numbers, as somebody who is, un, uh, look, I don't mean to sound this uh, in any way offensive at all, but untrained in how to look at numbers and statistics, mm-hmm. we're going to, you're going to infer things that are not inferable. Sure. You know, we're going to make mistakes in interpreting the statistics. Just yeah. like I would never, I would hope I would never tell an engineer how to build a bridge or how to build a plane. I don't, I don't even know um, enough to even know if I'm wrong. And that's dangerous. You know, if you don't know enough to even know what part of the map you're on, that's a dangerous place to be. So I would hope that we would entrust the people who know how to interpret these numbers, who know what this, this virus can do to the body to give us our best guidance, you know, like Dr. Fauci, who's done this since he's 70 something or nearly 80 and he's just dedicated his life he was on the forefront of the hiv pandemic and getting flack from everywhere he's getting flack from the gay community he's getting flack from uh you know the non-gay community and he just sailed the 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 narrow and uh in the global prevalence of hiv due to him and in large part to george w bush for starting the pepfar program to save millions of lives i'm not kidding you millions of lives probably close to like 20 million lives amazing what the work that you know that when he got george w bush to entrust him to start this uh program pepfar how great it was and so if we can entrust our most uh experienced leaders who have been on the forefront of this before and this is uh, in the united states modern united states what this is most similar to and what my older colleagues are telling me is like the aids pandemic Mm. it's like you know in the 80s young males uh, all homosexual, mostly homosexual, were showing up to hospitals with florid pneumonia, and we had no idea why. None. Zero. If you want to watch a great movie about it, uh, it's called, I'm blanking on it. Uh, I'll th- I'll, it'll come to me a little bit later, but there's, a, there's a, shoot. Yeah, it'll come later. But it's the same thing. Like We had no idea what was going on, and we entrusted our scientists to figure out what it was, what virus it was, and then see how to fight it and um, come to figure out, like, we now HIV is not a death sentence. It used to be. Mm-hmm. And so basically I'm saying is let's entrust the people who know where on the map we are because it's like looking at a map and, uh, and assuming a very complicated map and, and un- unfortunately not knowing enough about it. Yeah, I think it's dangerous. I think it's dangerous. Albert. Yeah, I have a hard time trusting, you know, uh, I have a hard time trusting just because of all the things that I'm seeing. And then, of course, my own my own personal experience, you know, if I would have listened to the doctors with my MS diagnosis sure. I, and like I, I could have been in a wheelchair, you know. Yeah. Like, nobody told me anything to take care of my diet. That, what drugs do you want to take? You know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you have the, the relapsing remitting type of MS. Have they talked to you about that? Because there's there's progressive MS and there's relapsing remitting. To me, to me, it's, it, to me, it's like uh, mind, body, spirit. You know, uh, mind over matter. Like I mean, I don't know. Like your mindset, what you put in your body, right? I don't know. Like that's that's uh, that's what I'm focused. I decide to focus on. You know. Mm-hmm. And of course, doing the right things, you know, connecting my breath to the movement and the structure. Absolutely. You know, changes the immune system, lays down the myelin, you know, uh, uh, reconnects things, uh, you know, new, new brain cells and, you know, <laughs> bigger arborization of the brain. You know, it's like, it's like, it's, it's changed my life, you know, so I just know how I feel. And so I don't know. I don't know. I have a hard time, like fully, I listen, you know, but I have a hard time, like, like just surrounding, like, uh, just submitting to, because he's a, the person's a doctor, because this guy as it's, it, I don't know, I don't know, yeah. you know, and I, special interest groups and money's involved, you know, patents and things like that, yeah. you know, like the guy you saying about the polio vaccine, you know, he was like, he just gave it away. Cool. Right on. That's what I'm talking about, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so who, what's going on? Is somebody giving away the coronavirus uh, vaccine? Are they going to give it away to, to the people, you know, for it to be free? You know, who, that, that's the question. That's what you have to look at all these things, right? Because there are special interests, you know, there are lobbyists there for, for big pharma. Yeah. For, uh, for, well, uh, you know. It wasn't for free, the salt vaccine, but there was no royalties or patent. Right, off right. Of it, right. So I, I, like I, 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 right. what I know of, I think is going to, the same thing is going to happen. Um, it will cost something because it's going to cost something to manufacture and deliver sure. and that sort of thing. But uh, I, have, I have a strong confidence that, you know, whoever does this is going to take the same sentiment as Joseph Salt. I think his name is Joseph Salk. But I, I'm just going to rewind a second and just say, look, you get on a plane and you trust the plane. You trust the engineers. You trust the pilot. Why, why aren't you trusting the experts in this? You know, the, the time will tell, right? Time will tell like with all these things. Because it's like, 
I hope you you think you don't you don't say that when you get on a plane. Uh, well, they have the they have the the the, the what we call it the flight hours, right? So they have they have the reps, you know. So they're so, time tested. They've done the simulations, and this is where, where this is the first this is the first flight. So trusting a vaccine, trusting like this kind of a situation, it, we've never we haven't had it. Our grandparents didn't have to deal with it, you know. So it's like sure. it's uncharted territory. Uh, so this is blindly following somebody because they say something because they've dedicated yeah. their life. And I don't know. It seems like they're all, they're all like anti. People and I, I take everything a grain of salt, but I am like, okay, what if? What if they're that person's sure. right? Both sides are right. I think I think you just answered your own question in that statement, and that you want time, you want time trials, you want people who've done simulations, and that's exactly what we're what doctors do. I, I've seen tens of thousands of patients to get to where I am to, and that's what these virologists are doing as well, and that's what the vaccine is doing as well. They're going to be testing it on thousands of patients. They're getting that flight time. And there's no way that they're going to, there, no, that I hope so. It is, it is happening. It is. And there's no way they're going to release something to the public that they would think is harmful. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, well, I guess we'll Even see. the remote chance, even the remote chance of being harmful, it's not going to go out. Yeah. They'll be, they'll be like, ah, sorry, ours didn't work. Somebody else. And that's why there's so many candidate vaccines going out there because we need, we need, we're going to find the best one that has the best efficacious profile with the least amount of side effects. And that one is going to be the one that's going to be distributed. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, I, I hope for the best, you know, I hope, I hope you're right. You know, I hope you're right. And I hope uh, it actually is, everything's legit and it's, it works and there's no, you know, crazy yeah. side effects and it helps a lot yeah. of people, saves a lot of lives. Yes. I'm, I'm with you, you know, I'm with yeah. you. You know, I'm also with you in that you feel frustrated and that you, you want to walk into everything with all eyes open. And I, I hope that this is a conversation that, as people listen to and that yeah. they don't feel that there's animosity here and there's not. And I respect yeah. you a lot, Alberto. And that, uh, um, you know, this is a, a conversation that uh, needs to be had with grace as I think we've achieved in, uh, on this podcast throughout our country. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I hope, I hope for the best and, and that's it, you know, that, that we, we pass through this, you know, and absolutely. Uh, get to absolutely. The life. I, one of the things, one, one more thing I just wanted to kind of talk about was the, uh, just like, you know, like there's like the, the, you know, the economy and people's like livelihoods and the mental health and yeah. you know, one person is one person more valuable than another person. And how do you, how do you make that call? You know, like, okay, there's, you know, people, somebody can get the coronavirus, they're at risk. Right. Mm -hmm. And why are they better than somebody that maybe has some mental health issues that, uh, you know, recovering drug, addict, drug addicts, who knows, you know, uh, alcoholics, you know, yep. uh, uh, you know, kids that are abused at home and, you know, being at views more now because, you know, we're, we're in that situation. So how do we, what's the right call? Uh, what's the, sorry, the question is, what's the right call? No, to... just, just because, because, you know, how, what makes one person's life more valuable oh. than the other? That oh. basically, like the cure being, being uh, the, the cure being worse than the, you know, than the, than the, the symptoms, right? Right. Um, so you're saying that because, you're, you're comparing the, you're talking, you want to discuss the slow strangulation of economic death. Is what you're saying? I mean, it's going to, it's going to affect a lot of people. Absolutely. You know, is. Uh, everything, you know, like their yeah. mental health and uh, yeah. people are going to die from it. That's the yeah. reality. People yeah. are going to die. Yeah. People are going to commit suicide. Many people that are already at risk for these things. I know people that are, they haven't left their house one time. Yeah. People that and are I, in that fear mindset, like they're going to be even more. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing that, uh, as well in the emergency department, people are coming on overdosing or drinking too much yeah, and yeah. fall in and doing, doing things that they shouldn't be. So yes, it is occurring and it might be occurring in the, in the people that are, are susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. And it's happening. Um, probably you know, quite honest, not as frequently as I would see when before this lockdown happened, but it's mm -hmm. still happening. And the longer this goes on, the longer that we're not able to socialize because humans are social beings. Right. And that's part of what makes us right. tick and keeps us going. Um, the more likelihood that it's going to happen. And, um, you know, it's part of opening up and the desire to open up slowly is that we, we can't hold, put the economy on pause forever. Like yeah, exactly. It, we need to start opening up and doing so in responsible ways. And we have... At every, at, I hope at every seat in every discussion that's happening across our country, there's you know a physician, epidemiologist, virologist, mm. and definitely an economist that is talking about what's the best way to get 
the jobs back into people and the money back into people mm. who, who deserve it and need it. And I hope there's a, a there's an equal seat at that table. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so too, and and I hope for the best. You know, I was going back to Sweden, like they they never really they you know quarantine the elderly that yeah. risk, you know, but like they had bars open, they had some things like enforced with some restrictions, you know. Mm-hmm. But we totally like we're shutting down everything, right? Pretty mm-hmm. much Except for Costco with a pack <laughs> full of people and grocery stores, you know, with a line out the door. Um, I don't know. It's, it's yeah. Crazy. With Sweden, the death, um, you know, if you compare it to the other Scandinavian countries, the deaths, the amount of deaths is higher. And I don't know how you put a number on an extra one to 2000 deaths. You know, um, it's, it's, it's a line that I think they took um, that is a little bit f- too far towards the cavalier side, in, in my opinion, because every life means something, as you said, mm-hmm. and I w- they could have prevented uh, a, a large part of those deaths by locking down, but they chose the route that they wanted to go. And well, maybe, um, maybe some people don't overdose or maybe some people don't, uh, you know, like commit suicide or, you know, because they, you know, so maybe, maybe they got saved a thousand people. Yeah, on the side, right? sure. Kids maybe, being, you know, Maybe some, but like I said, what I'm seeing personally here in, in the emergency part is I'm seeing less of those psychiatric uh, uh, emergencies, like overdoses and and um, you know suicide attempts. Yeah, well, I, I hope so. I hope, I hope, uh, hope. Uh, I I think positive on everything. You know, it's just uh, the freedoms. You know, I just uh, hope our country stays free and uh, you know stays the country that it is with the with the rights that we do have. And they don't get taken away from us, you know, like with the 9-11, right? Uh, with the Patriot Act and all those things. I just don't hope, uh, you know, our rights get taken away from us because of, you know, the situation. Yeah. You know, I, I love the country. I love what it stands for. Sure. You know, that's not even my father going, uh, you know, going to Vietnam because he believes in what, what our country stands for. I just hope, uh, I hope those things will take, don't, don't get taken away. I hear you there. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. And I really, of course. Uh, like I, 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 I'm kind of out of you from, uh, from kind of the other side, you know, just, it's been, it's been tough, you know, like seeing my dad, you know, get locked up and at this, at his age and his, his condition, you know, mm. it's really, it's been tough, you know? And then of course, like things that I really love to do, like I can't do it. Right. And the people and the, you know, and then there's no end in sight. Right. So it's super frustrating. It's like, and the governor is so vague, like there's no exact dates, you know, sure. uh, it's like, everybody's like in limbo and, you know, uh, good friends of mine, like stand up comedy comedians, and they're like, oh, I'm never going to do stand up again. And it's just like, there's so much limbo, you know. But I, I do it's believe, frustrating. Yeah, yeah, this too shall pass, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, just, you know, it's like, I, I, I know jiu jitsu, right? So it's like, you're in a bad position. Like, my, my, my teacher, my professor, professor is saying, you're in a bad position. You don't panic and freak yeah. out. You just wait it out, wait it out. And then when it's your time, you, you make your move, right? Yeah, yeah. You use your hips. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this space will open up. Yeah. Right on, Alberto, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, as always. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, really interesting time, right? We got to talk it is. when it was closing down, and now I don't know what, I don't know what phase we're in right now, but uh, yeah. we're in the middle of it or towards the end, I hope. Yeah. One day I'm going to come, come get a train. I'm going to train in your gym one day soon. It's yeah. going to happen. Looking forward to it. Your brother still lives, lives in Los Angeles? Yeah, yeah, he's still here. Um, yeah, his he's a, he's a bar owner, so uh, uh, let's just say he's fucked. <laughs> so, so he's alive. He's alive. He's, he's alive. He's alive. Yeah, so, and we can rebuild from whatever you know. As long as we're alive, we can rebuild from. Yeah, somewhere. yeah, yeah. So he, he unlikely to reopen again, but we'll see. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's hurting. Yeah. Yep. Much well, love, man. Much love to your family and your dad. Um, you know. He'll pull through this. He just sounds like a strong guy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Yeah. All right, man. Take care. Talk to you soon.